it's it's clear, con- as, it, clear it's, as mud. It's, it's, it's called continuity. <laughs> uh, let's just bring in the expert who understands this thing. William Ngeno is the country manager for Yara East Africa. That's covering the countries of Kenya and Uganda. He joins us on the line. William, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Muga. How are you? We're fine, thank you. And good to have you on the show again. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me today here. Let's start with uh, asking that question, and then we'll come now. We'll work backwards into who Yara is and how you 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 get into digital agriculture. What is digital agriculture? Yeah, it's interesting when you bring the concept of uh, uh, te- telephone farming. I think it happens <laughs> to, to 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 most people. But um, I would just add the comment that digital farming now brings the aspects of data. Mm-hmm. How do you make those decisions, even if you are farming remotely, uh, which uh, most often uh, happen, especially with the young generation who probably are double uh, uh, you know, walking in, 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 in other areas and they are farming in other areas. So mm. digital farming, actually, I would call it smart agriculture. Okay. This is where now you can be able to harness the power of data, the power of uh, 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 satellites, the power of precision farming. So bringing all those information enables you as a farmer to make smart decisions. And at the end of the day, it is linked into transformation. So how do you bring efficiency into agriculture? Mm-hmm. If we look at the food agri-chain, uh, most, most people call it farm to fork. Mm-hmm. So how do you bring smart decisions into that? This is where the interface with digital uh, agriculture comes in because you look at the production cycle, you look at the supply chain logistics, and eventually accessibility of the food to the market mm. or to the consumers, mm. whatever we get on our tables uh, every single day. So in a nutshell, I would say digital farming is harnessing the power of data and using technologies to be able to spur and, and change the way of uh, uh, working mm. and mm. if we look at the history uh, of agriculture globally mm. there have been three revolutions and for every uh, revolution there is a striking element mm. so if we start you know 2000 BC uh, there was the Neolithic revolution and this is where you know man started uh, leaving hunting and start you know domesticating animals yes then we went into the second agricultural revolution mm. This was actually driven by the industrial revolution because by by that time uh, the industries needed uh, raw material. So agriculture became very important at that time. Uh, that's around 17th century. Mm-hmm. Then we now came recently. The last one was the green revolution. We all know that's around 1950s, 1960s. Mm-hmm. And the element there was around uh, breeding, use of uh, new pesticides. Uh, high yielding varieties mm. so that was a striking element at that time because of the growing population so to sum up now the digital farming is that we are looking at the fourth revolution of mankind in agriculture which will be driven by technology and this is where digital transformation digital farming comes into play because the element now for the revolution we are looking at is digital Okay, so give us an example of how it works. Because, I mean, it sounds great, um, but what is it? How? I have a one-acre farm of maize, and I do my intermediary potato farming. How, then, will this particular technology help me? And we're looking, then, at trying to make it a sustainable uh, economy through agriculture, for example. So digital tech- digital farming, how is it, then, going to uh, make sure that we are on the right track. What exactly does it do for me who has this farm? Okay, so if, if we put it practically, for example, you're working remotely on, on that aspect. Uh, we did a survey about two years ago and uh, what the key elements and the key pain points for farmers is one, they don't have reliable information on weather. Mm. They don't have reliable information about uh, how to control pests and diseases and what to do at the farm at what time. Mm-hmm. So bringing in the digital uh, aspects, for example, the weather. A lot of farmers lose money because they don't know actually when it's going to rain. So it is guesswork, you know. 
the, you plant your potatoes, uh, you, you know always it rains in February, yep. but because of climate change, suddenly it rains in uh, three months down the line. Uh, a farmer has sunk in, you know, 50,000 shillings, and it's all gone. Mm. However, if you are working with smart agriculture, digital tools, like weather applications, which can give you precise weather uh, outlook for the next uh, 30 days, mm -hmm. you are able to make as a farmer a key decision when actually to do your planting, when to do your applications, and eventually you can even forecast and see when your produce will go to the market. Mm. Then you bring in now other applications during the season. Remotely, you can monitor your crop. Uh, maybe it's not so advanced in, in Kenya, but mm. you can have applications that you don't need to you know, look for an agronomist. With a smart tool, take a photo of your, of, of your crop and boom, you, you already know this is a disease. This is uh, something that you need to, 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 to action in your farm to be able to do that. But if you see the rudimentary way of working, it's, it's, it's a bit of guesswork because we say, you know, this has always been like this. And, and, and if we go that route, you know, the transformation won't happen. So there's an opportunity now to really be able to bring this revolution using these uh, smart, uh, smart tools. And how does Yara come in? In fact, let's start with who is Yara? What do you do? And then how do you fit in this uh, unfolding revolution? So the um, key question is why Yara is being involved here. Actually, uh, digital was not our main platform uh, till about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Yara is, uh, is a Norwegian company, is a global leader in fertilizer production. So we are based out of Oslo. We work in uh, more than 100 countries. In Kenya and East Africa in particular, we've been uh, operating here for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And our main business is uh, the production of uh, crop-specific fertilizers and of course distribution across uh, the, the, the region. However, the differentiating factor of what we do is we look at the future, and when we look at the future, the growing population, uh, we change our mission and say, you know, we want to responsibly feed the world because the planet is changing, climate change is here. Mm. So two aspects that really uh, will spur and change the agricultural landscape in the future is first, we need to feed the population, and second, we need to protect the environment. How do we do that? we needed to harness the power of digital uh, frameworks, digital platforms. Mm. So over the past three years, we've invested into a digital platforms so that it complements the knowledge uh, that we have. We have knowledge of how to grow crops, how to help farmers uh, change their livelihoods, how to produce this, but that's not enough. Uh, to reach millions of smaller farmers, we really needed to build digital platforms, which can support now the, the transformation uh, on these aspects. For example, the weather pattern. So we have weather applications that, you know, farmers can access and be able, in their remote location, wherever they are in Kenya, they can tell how was their rain pattern in the last uh, 30 days and how it's going to be in the next 14 days. So that they can plan, they can smartly make good decisions. Mm -hmm. We have nutrient, uh, nutrient uh, deficiency uh, applications. So farmers take photos, and they can be able to see what is the deficiency in their crops. How can they make their crops even double yield? Or what fertilizers do they need? And most importantly, which has been a big pain point, and I, if you, you talked about this in some of your show, I think last year, around access of inputs to the smallholders, you, yeah. know, you know, fertilizer. Mm. How, how is it accessible? It's still a big challenge. So what we are doing is harnessing the power of digital by connecting the retailers all across the country. Mm -hmm. at their shops they are able to give advice to the farmers in every village, in every country, so that we are able to trace and provide uh, knowledge to the farmers, uh, necessarily not physically, but also virtually at every single. So within the comfort of within four kilometer radius of the farmers, they can walk to the nearest agrovet, get the knowledge, get the product, and most importantly, we can create now a communication, a uh, smart way of communicating to those farmers mm. uh, in, 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 in every remote area of, of, uh, of Kenya. Okay, so I mean, clearly this is something that is going to need some hardware, obviously. Um, and uh, we already know that in as much as there has been the proliferation of something as basic as the internet, which obviously is important in this process, um, um, setting up the infrastructure to have this done for some of the remote farmers that you've just mentioned, uh, 
are we looking at it being first of all possible to initiate and then possible to sustain so that you have a farmer who is in the remotest part of the country then who would be able to have this information uh, and then be able to uh, uh, you know hurdle these challenges of access to the internet for example access to the piece of hardware that would allow you to access it how do we deal with that because it is a challenge I, I couldn't agree more with you because that's a main blocker. Mm. And and when we started off, uh, it was uh, apparent that, of course, if you look at the average age of a farmer now in our country, we are talking about uh, upwards of 50s. Mm. So the challenge has been to get smartphone uh, farmers with the smartphones, which, of course, would now enable a lot of these technologies to go. So as a first phase, what we did is to tailor make the solutions to work also on USSD, which uh, can work with feature phones. Uh, However, we believe the medium-term future, mm. the revolution has to happen. We, we don't have a choice. When you talk about food security, one, more than one million people going hungry, and that situation is going to get worse because of the, you know, what's happening with the COVID disruptions and all that. Mm. So in the future, yes, and this is where we, know we need policy makers, you need the civil um, society. This is where the donor funds goes into to support those kinds of enabling uh, uh, the blockers and locking the blockers, you know, the hardware bit, the knowledge, the, 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 the technology, and then private sector, as they plug in into the businesses, then it makes it even more sustainable. Mm. But uh, I agree, it is work in progress, uh, and, and that's why we have to start somewhere. Start with solutions that can, you know, work with feature phones, communicate with those, and eventually graduate those small holders. And, and just to add to that, mm. uh, to alleviate that challenge as well is, if we look at the farmer, then where does the farmer get the knowledge now? We all know the garment extension system is very far, no yeah. free system at all. Yeah. But fair fruit that you know, you know the extension uh, you don't show, you don't see farmers don't see the extension workers. Yep. So they walk to the next shop. They want to buy feed. They want to buy a fertilizer. They want to buy something. So that is the agent who most likely will interact with the farmer hundred percent, and. If we are able to catalyze and give the right information at that point, then we are more likely that we get the change start happening. Mm. So empowering these uh, retailers, these agrovets, these sellers of seeds and inputs, and ensuring that they are able to vet and give the right information, be agents of uh, transformation, mm. will be the first step. And this is how we are looking at it, and that's where we are empowering them. Some of them, we have had to empower them with smartphones, with own investments, but to, to catalyze. Uh, and I think with more partnerships along the way, we, we can be able to reach quite a lot more so that the, 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 the sellers of inputs are able to not only sell inputs, but be the agents of transformation with the power of digital platforms on their phones, on their tablets, at their shops. Mm. They can now not only just be traders, but you know, bring change to, to, to the society. But you know, William, innovation is uh, when you provide a solution and a solution that makes sense to the consumer. And if you look at all those uh, revolutions that we've talked about, people, you know, there's somebody who came up with one way of doing things and then people copied. Now, in terms of our digital revolution, as we're calling it, or tech revolution in this country, has there been a good rapid uptake of what we're doing or must it be aided like you're saying you know empowering the retailers empowering the agrovets empowering the farmers and all must it be you know taken through empowerment or is it that the retailer can actually see the value of what they are doing uh, by by here i'm talking about you're an agrovet you know your customers you know that they need, need information you know that from you know the touch of a button or looking at a screen you can access a lot of information you can service your customers why isn't it happening rapidly organically so i think the, the main the main thing is that uh, it has it has been business as usual mm. but maybe we needed to strike on elements that only brings value if we look if you look at uh, the, the the mobile communications uh, with the money transfer systems mm. it is it, it was successful because it was value it, it could cut transaction cost uh, for, 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 for the consumer. Yep. So the appetite for it went really up. But for agriculture, I think there hasn't been that appreciation that it is actually time to utilize the digital 
platforms to be able to move this. And this is this is the hard thing that we we are driving. This and that's my point, that William. That, that maybe yes. it's because it's not making sense to the end user. Hmm. Everybody in the country did not need to be told why M-Pesa would work. There was a little bit of information, but then you could you try it once, you see it works, and you are hooked. It spreads like wildfire. <laughs> in fact, when but, you're but, talking but, about the the the, uh, the advantages of this digital age. Hmm. Uh, the purveyors of MPESA understood it very well because they didn't just stop at MPESA. They made sure that they kept giving you information, providing you with more products, doing all sorts of things. So once you had an interest, it was hooked. Now, if we were to use that, the blueprint of uh, MPESA, how exactly this very wonderful thing that you're telling us about, how does it compare and how do you see the farmer or those who are interested in this particular sector taking it up and it proliferating to the point where the farmer benefits and also the end user who may be the consumer also benefits? Actually, actually things are changing. Uh, I agree with you. It was a bit slow. Mm. But and Pesa, why, why it's successful is because of, 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 of the appetite around it. Mm. However, if you look at the farmer, if you look at the Kenyan farmer, the average age is coming down. So also the appetite to make smart decisions is 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 very high. Yes. So it has to happen because uh, it's not it's not the old people now making decisions who would be you know more conservative and more that. What yeah. we see is that with the youth going in there, with more generation, with the with the employment issues uh, happening uh, now, a lot of young people are going into agriculture. Mm -hmm. So they need to make smart decisions and also. That has to happen. Uh, why, why I'm convinced is because, you know, our land is not growing. Mm. Population is growing uh, almost 3% every year. So at the end of the day, that productivity needs to improve. And more importantly, there's another element that we need to talk about called traceability. Mm. The food that you eat on your table every day, right. eventually we will be demanded to have traceability. Yeah. I know it's not a big concern quality here, but all the exports we do, in here has traceability they can tell what uh, inputs are being used which vehicle transported it and that is where digital platform also play a role mm -hmm. but soon traceability is also catching up uh, uh, with us mm -hmm. what you buy in the supermarkets you need to know how it was done yep. where is it from which farmer specifically and and, and that's why i say it and, is inevitable and can you verify it is exactly yep. uh, you can only verify if you have a uh, you know a foolproof digital platform that yeah. you know within seconds you are always able to 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 verify yeah. so it's low but it has to it has to happen and we at tiara we we, we are investing uh, on that uh, uh, seriously yeah. actually seriously investing around it because we feel the change has to happen even at the retailer level they have to drive the change because the consumers will be demanding uh, traceability they will be demanding quality how so broad is your outreach for that how so far and wide is your outreach currently in, in Kenya? So we are in every corner of uh, this country. Uh, we, we work with more than 600 direct uh, retailers. So ideally in every farming society in Kenya, you would talk about having a Yara agent close by. Mm -hmm. What we've done is map at the ward. We, we really want to see that every ward in the country, mm -hmm. you can, as a farmer, can tap into knowledge at that point of uh, 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 service so that they get service and product in every ward that is the first ambition it's a it's, 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 it's a big ambition but we need to be in every ward and then our vision now in two years time the farmer don't need to go more than four kilometers to get service or good product in agriculture and once we have this platform then partners you know who are sourcing from farmers can also plug in into it mm. finance can plug into it insurance, sure. all these other services. And where does government... So, so that it makes work. Right. I, I see this growing, but at the same time, I think that there are other elements that need to accompany this. And why? Because we still look at the challenges that farmers face in terms of the expense of uh, uh, farm inputs, of uh, raw material to be able to uh, achieve a harvest. And we talk about the protection of farmers. We talk about uh, uh, the regulation of, uh, uh, of the market so that, you know, uh, local goods vis-a-vis -vis export then uh, have price controls and things like that. 
Now, even as this is done and you're able to trace and you're able to digitalize the uh, agriculture, right? Don't you see that government input also has to come hand in hand with this? Because I could be tracing um, and I could be digitalizing my, my farm and all of this as long as the day is. But if I am still not realizing the profits that I should be at the end of the day, if, I, if this uh, business is not uh, profitable for me, then I can digitalize till I'm blue in the face. But it doesn't really make sense uh, for the market. Do you see a, a correlation or a necessary marriage between uh, government uh, cooperation as well as this, which you're doing? Yes, yes, yes absolutely. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. And uh, if you look at the, at the government intervention, the policy needs to come in. And, and that's one of the blockers as well, because when you look at the regulations around data, uh, as I told you earlier, the, the digital farming will only succeed with the proper uh, data and accuracy of data. So what are the policies around data management, infrastructure, how, how, how we spread of the internet on that, and mm -hmm. the regulations? So I, last year, the government of Kenya uh, uh, launched the digital strategy, and, and one of their flagships is the eVulture platform, mm -hmm. where they move from distributing inputs uh, at depots, but you know, going into the digital uh, space to 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 verify farmers and all that, which is a good which is a good start uh, on that. But they come in in terms of regulations, and some countries are ahead of us. It's good to benchmark um, because without proper data, the government also is not going to make good decisions. Mm. So building a good data uh, by the government is more more than urgent at this point of time because then they can make smart decision on policy. They can make smart decision on the spending. The little budget that is actually going to agriculture yep. needs to be used efficiently. But it can only be used efficiently if this data is actually captured smart so that they know what is the focus areas here and here. Countries like Rwanda are ahead of us. We work uh, with the Rwanda government now mm. around their subsidies. Mm. And, and, and at the comfort of the table, the minister is able to see which word exactly, which farmer has picked the inputs, which, which word is growing what, mm. to the granularity of a farmer. So we also needed to get there in, uh, in, in our country to have that granularity of data so that the spend and the policy decision becomes more accurate. Uh, and it's good that the uh, government has, has long that uh, policy, uh, digital policy agenda mm. to, 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 to drive this. However, to make it sustainable, then businesses have to see sense. Businesses like us, that we see the opportunities, have to see that sense. So yep. if we get a good uh, policy environment, uh, which is the key role that I see the government now catalyzing these uh, innovations, then it will be more than, 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 than successful at the, at the end of the day. Thank you very much, William, for sharing with us this. William Ngeno is the country manager for Yara East Africa, covering some countries in the East African region. William, thank you. You know, even as we're talking about, you know, the uptake of MPESA, we've got to remember the issue of cash transfer was also just a slow revolution, but it was happening as we were watching. There was a telegraphic money gram, then uh, there was the others like, you know, uh, Western Union and the rest. And then <laughs> yes, people started yes. now moving from the telegraphic money gram to sending parcels via bus. Exactly. <laughs> it's a process. And we need to start. We uh, need to start. And uh, the so fact that, Yara, start. you are right there in the center of that in uh, trying to make sure that this is happening, we hope that history will actually recognize the efforts that you're making now when that big break happens. Because I think at some point, one thing will come up which will make a lot of sense that the uptake will be like wildfire. Yes. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Have a good day. Good day. It's 27 minutes to 8. We have been talking about, well, digital agriculture. You've heard from William. And it's about the numbers, numbers in agriculture at whatever point in the value chain, whether it's at the input level, whether it's at uh, the market, the aggregation level, whether it's taking it all the way to the fork, to your plate.